Hello, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name's Bob Alley. I make books under the name R.W. Alley. And thank you to School Library Journal for inviting me to be part of their Studio Spotlight series. Today, I wanted to show you my newest book. It's called Firefighters to the Rescue. It's what I would call a fictional nonfiction book. Now, it's fictional because clearly all the characters in here, all the people, are actually animals. And it's nonfiction because these critters live in real people houses and dress in real people clothes and have real people jobs. Now, the subject of this particular book, of course, as you probably guessed, is firefighting. All the, all the critters in this book, well, the main critters in this book, the critters we follow in this book, are all firefighters. There are seven of them, and they're very, very busy. And I wanted to show you today how I went about making one of these fictional, non-fiction books, because it's very important, it was very important to me that all the firefighting procedures and all the firefighting equipment that these critters deal with is absolutely real. Absolutely the same things and the same equipment, the same procedures, the same way a problem would be approached that real human firefighters use to fight fires. So let's get started. Now, the next thing to do was to use everything I learned to create an interesting set of adventures for our firefighters to deal with. Um, and I did that with the help of clever editor Harold. And it was very tricky. In the end, there wind up being three adventures. And, but, oh no, 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 nope. I should not tell you what they are yet. Um, that would be a spoiler. You'll have to discover them yourself. But uh, devising these three adventures was a lot of fun, and it involved a lot of complicated drawing, such as this, and such as this, and making sure all the labels were correct, all the very real. And, well, that is why I wound up using a type of illustration that I had never used before. It became quite an adventure for me, too. So first of all, in thinking about my fictional nonfiction story, I decided I needed the fictional world where my animal characters would live to be as real for them as possible. That way, the nonfiction information that I wanted to include in the book would make sense and be believable. So, as always, the first thing I did was to get out my trusty sketchbook and begin drawing world after world and with all sorts of characters and places in them. And then I moved on to trying to discover what the what the, this world would look like with a little bit of color added to it, because I've always found that the best way for me to think about a story is to draw the story out first and to see what the characters look like and to see what the where what the place they live in looks like. So this was all very important in creating this fictional world. So after my sketchbook filled up, I moved on to drawing all sorts of different towns in much larger scale, um, figuring that I could mash up all the interesting features like mountains or oceans of the towns to make one town that would be really interesting for my characters to live in, but would be believable because it had all the different elements that a town really should have, even things like highways and covered bridges and apple orchards and fairgrounds. So eventually, this is what turned up. Uh, a town with a big lake with mountains on either side, and I called it Breezy Valley because, well, well it's in a valley and there is a breeze that always blows through and so that's the town that wound up being in the book. And this is the end sheets of the book on either end. And you can find, you can follow and trace what our firemen are doing uh, through the town. Now it was time to discover who lived in Breezy Valley. So I did a lot of drawing 
and I wanted to make sure that each animal was an individual, just like in the real world. Um, everybody is, is an individual. So I didn't repeat any animals, and I tried to make a, as much a variety as I could. And after I was done, um, after I was happy with, uh, with a number of uh, folks who were in Breezy Valley, I had to decide which ones were likely to join the fire department. And this was the initial crew that popped up. Now that my fictional firefighting crew was all set, I had to figure out how to turn them into real firefighters. And so the nonfiction part of my research began. And this required a lot of looking on the web at various pictures of firefighting procedures and equipment details, the cross sections I made use of in the book quite a lot. And I discovered though, after looking at all these pictures, that really the thing that would be best would be if I could actually visit my local fire department. And that's exactly what I did. And our fire chief was very, very helpful in allowing me to take many, many pictures of all the firefighting apparatus. And he talked about the procedures that the firefighters uh, use in putting out fires and uh, conducting rescues. And it was all enormously helpful. And you'll see as you go through this book that there, most of the pictures in fact, I would say almost all of these pictures somehow or other got used in the in the book. There's the there's the firefighting um, breathing apparatus. There's the fact that firefighters hang their coats by the uh, on the fire engines um, that they'll that they'll be riding in should an emergency arise. There's all the stuff inside the fire engines and all those marvelous doors and hatches and all the um, all the equipment that that the firefighters use and including the the masks that go under their hoods and the way they set up their gear so that they can jump right into it in case there's a, in case there's an emergency and there there's the coat hanging up again and and the hoses oh my goodness the number of hoses that the fire department has is just it is just tremendous anyway almost everything in these pictures wound up being in my drawings and as you can imagine was a pretty complicated process to put all that together in the past, when I've made pictures for a book, I've used physical tools, such as the watercolor paints in either tubes or bottles, and brushes, and pens, and inks, and pans of watercolor, which I really enjoy. And, oh, I should clean out that water dish. Hmm. And uh, more pencils. And all, all of it goes into making a drawing that will live on paper. But for this book, because it was so complicated, I decided I'd better figure out how to use an iPad. So even though I decided to use the iPad for the final drawings, I began all my drawings in my sketchbook or on separate sheets of paper in pencil and then went over them in, in a marker or ink. And then I moved them into the iPad. Now in this example, you can see how I've constructed the, the characters the way I usually do. I make a stick figure outline to make sure I have all the movements right of the, of the character's um, figure. And paying, I pay more attention to the head at this point because I want to make sure the eyes are going in the proper direction. That's very important. Now, after I scanned this into the iPad, I then began using the various iPad tools, which are fantastic. I made this drawing a lot lighter, and I created another layer on top of that drawing and traced over the character, but I added all the firefighting clothing that the character would be wearing, the jacket and the boots and the pants. And as you can see, I'm just following the outline of the stick figure that I had already drawn and the hands coming up like that, and his little snout, her little snout, actually, this is Chief Piggy. She's a very, very clever firefighter. And she has her ear coming out like that. And then, of oh, no, she'll be wearing her hat. 
So we need to put a hat on her head like this. And we need to put the snood that protects the rest of their, their heads when the firefighters are bravely going off to fight the fire. And I, I trace over the hose that comes out and down around here like this. And then I have, so now I have more of a rounded figure uh, instead of a stick figure. And then at that point, I make that line work very light and I actually get rid of the very first drawing like that. So now we just have a very light red drawing and then I create another layer and use my black pen. That will be the final pen line for for the book and I'll make that a little narrower than the red and I'll begin with this with uh, P Chief Piggy Snout here and give her a smile like that and, and maybe make her concentrating with her eyes like this because that's very important of course and bringing the firefighting hat up and around with a little doohickey at the top and the snood coming around like this and following the lines of the coats and I'll put I'll put some gloves on her like so and bringing the coat down here now at this point I'll add more details like the buckles that close the coat or the special knee pads that the firefighters have to make sure that because you know in regular pants knees wear out m most quickly can you imagine what would happen in firefighter pants and the boots like that and now more detail of the of the hose nozzle because there's lots of detail in the hose nozzle like that and how it connects to the hose now the water isn't flowing through the hose yet so it's a little flat at this point but she's getting chief piggy is getting ready for the blast of uh, water pressure that's going to come when the hose gets turned on so then so put a little ground under her like that and maybe a little bit of more detail and the nice thing about these pens is that you can make the line thick or light depending on what you know, depending on what part of the drawing you're drawing so then I get rid of the red line drawing and go to another layer and I make sure that this layer will be transparent so that when I add color which I will now um, to the drawing that the black line that I originally drew will show through. So now I'll make Chief Piggy's coat yellow like this, as they are in in um, in the Breezy Valley Fire Department, and she'll have a white hat because she's the chief. The chief always has has a white hat, and then we'll put some dark gray for her boots down here like this and oh and I think a little bit of oh here we'll add a little bit of color here for around her her snood and the hose itself will be a dark green like this and let's see her gloves I think should be sort of a red like this and the hose nozzle itself has is sometimes black, sometimes various colors, sometimes it'll even be, which is really cool, a bright red like that. And um, and the and the connection will be either a brass or a silver. We'll put a silver like that, and maybe some shadow coming in around Chief Piggy's helmet like this, and we'll add a little color to to Chief Piggy herself so that she she looks a little more piggy and uh, and have a little bit and add a little bit of uh, shadow under her hat and on, on her snoot and we'll add a little bit um, more shadow on the on her coat like this so she can be she can be running into the into the fray and let's see oh Let's add breezy, oops, nope, that is too thick. And the nice thing about this uh, machine is that you can change things at a moment's notice like that breezy valley fire department.
So that's how all these drawings in this book were made. Of course, they took a little bit more time than this, but the idea is the same. You begin with the stick figure and you simply um, you simply uh, enlarge it into, um, into a, a full figure. Now, once all the pictures were done, it's important to know that just as Harold helped me with the words, designer Barbara was able to help me make sure that all the words were in their proper places and that the pictures and the words work together. She helped design where the, where the speech bubbles would be and the type and the way the typeface would look and how all those large sounds would be brought out. Um, and then it was off to production manager Ray to explain to me how to send all the pictures and all the lettering uh, that I used uh, I put together on the iPad, how to send all of that stuff to him so he could send it on to the printing plant and make a hold in your hand book. This very book right here. I wasn't the quickest study on figuring out how to send these things from the iPad to the, well, I actually wanted to put the iPad in the, in the mail in a big padded envelope and just send it to him. But he said there were easier ways to do it. Thank goodness. So that's how I went about making the fictional nonfiction book, Firefighters to the Rescue. Next up is another fictional nonfiction book. This time we're going to be visiting the Breezy Valley Hospital. And we're going to be learning all about the Breezy Valley doctors and nurses and all the staff in the hospital. And for that, I was lucky enough to have the help of the Hartford Children's Hospital. So, I hope that you all will continue to write your own stories and draw your own pictures to illustrate your own stories and to share your stories, which is the most wonderful thing you can do because sharing stories is how we learn about each other. And it's also a really good way to express yourself when you're, you know, feeling feeling things that you can't sometimes say directly, sometimes you find that you can say them in stories. And to share a story like that is, is really very special and very important. So I wish you happy story making and happy reading and a happy rest of the day. Thank you for stopping by my studio. Bye-bye.